Welcome back. This is Chris, my brother in Christ, Stephen. Welcome back. Uh, date today is June 5th, year of our Savior, Jesus Christ, 2022. And the title of this video is called uh, Creation Science Part 3. Creation Science Part 3. Now, this is not, this is just designed to get you to start thinking about things. So a lot of stuff that we think have we been programmed to believe um, has not been true. And, you know, during the latter times, as things are beginning to escalate and there's consequences for deviating from the Word of God, we're trying to offer a solution that we need Jesus Christ and to submit to His Word. Now, we left off, of what we're going to talk about today is Joshua 10, verses 12 through 13. Joshua 10, uh, 12, verse 13. 10, 12 through 13. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Agilon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Amen. You know, what's interesting is what you read, Stephen, what really jumped out at me is it said the sun stood still and the moon stayed. So the sun and the moon are the two great lights in the firmament in Genesis chapter 1. And when they stopped the sun, then the moon stopped as well. Now, if we just start to take into consideration the heliocentric theory, we realize that if God stopped something, specifically the earth, all of us would be killed, okay? Now, bear with me, all right? So also, um, what Stephen read is, I, I want to just highlight, is that it said, the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. And it didn't talk about it stood still upon Gibeon, and then the moon was in the valley of Agilon, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how could that really be if the moon, the sun is 93 million miles away, right? Wouldn't it just, just engulf the globe, right? So this, to me, is showing that the uh, sun and the moon, the two great lights, are a lot closer than we really think. And that's why it was, it was showing in a specific location. That and the moon and the sun are almost identical in size. Yeah, and we can observe that through our own eyes. So that is a scientific experiment, which is very good, which is duplicatable and repeatable, right? And measurable. And measurable, amen. So you notice that the passage said, The sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hastened to not go down about a whole day. It did not state that the earth stopped spinning. It states that the sun stood still. Interestingly, it also states that the moon also stayed. A car or vehicle traveling at a mere 60 miles per hour and coming to a sudden halt would kill all passengers on board. Imagine that. Imagine what would happen to people on Earth when the 1,000 uh, mile per hour uh, spinning Earth suddenly stopped. What do you think would happen to everybody? 1,000 yeah. miles per hour and it stops? Uh, people standing on earth would be caused to tumble and crash along the earth with such force as to be killed instantly. Indeed, any physicist worth his salt would understand that if the earth were spinning, as supposed by modern science, at over a thousand miles per hour at the equator, and it suddenly stopped, there would be complete carnage on earth for all living things. The oceans still in motion would flood the continents. The very idea is ludicrous. Yet in Joshua 10, we have two armies facing each other, and they are not the least bit phased in their footing by the sun and the moon stopping. Interesting, right? Yeah. I mean, they're fighting a war right now, and if the, if the, if the, uh, the uh, earth is going and moving at 1,000 miles per hour and it stops, boom, you know, you think they're going to be able to keep their footing? No, they wouldn't, right? So we see this. So obviously, um, obviously it was not the earth that stopped spinning, but rather the sun and the moon stopped in their motion over a fixed, non-moving earth, just as the Bible describes it. 
Now, Creation Ministries International is just one of the many examples of Christian ministries that have been carried away from Christ and spoiled by the rudiments of the world, right? We see that clearly expressed, as re expressed in a review of Colossians 2, verse 8. Colossians 2, verse 8. So I thought that was really interesting in Colossians 2, verse 8. Colossians 2, verse, verse 8. 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Yeah, this is not after Christ, all right? Mm -hmm. So creationists are quite correct in attacking the scientific fraud of evolution and standing by the biblical authority for creation. However, many of them seem to reject the scientific evidence and biblical authority for a geocentric flat earth, which only serves to undermine the authority of the Bible, and in turn, their credibility. Dr. Danny R. Faulkner exhibits the typical hypocrisy of many creationists who stand by, stand by the biblical authority for creation, but reject that same biblical authority for a geocentric flat earth. Dr. Faulkner taught at the University of South Carolina, Lancaster, for over 26 years. Dr. Faulkner is a member of the Creation Research Society, the Bravid CRS, and also serves as the editor of the Creation Research Society Quarterly. He has written more than a hundred papers in various astronomy and astrophysics journals and is an author of, quote, Universe by Design, end quote, and the New Astronomy Book. How can a creation ministry accept the biblical authority for creation but reject this, that same authority for a geocentric flat earth? They use the devil-inspired artifice of textual criticism. The CRS statement of belief is similar to that of the Creation Ministries International. The Creation Research Society of belief is that, quote, the account of origins in Genesis is a factual presentation of simple historical truths, end quote. However, the CRS guts the authority of Scripture by limiting the inspired Word of God to only being, quote, historically and scientifically true in the original autographs, end quote. While this artifice of looking for his biblical authority to the original autographs is a Bible that no longer exists. Dr. Faulkner can embark on the duplicity of ignoring the clear meaning of Bible passages by engaging in textual criticism of the English or authorized King James Version translation. Quote, some creationists that be uh, believe that the scientific assault on the Bible did not begin with biological evolution, but with the acceptance of the heliocentric or more properly geokinetic theory centuries ago. These people believe that the Bible clearly states that the earth does not move and hence the only acceptance, acceptable biblical cosmology is a, gener a geocentric one. Modern geocentrists use both biblical and scientific arguments for their case. Some geocentrists draw distinctions that do not exist in the original autographs or even in translations. Much of their case is based upon a misunderstanding of general relativity, general relativity, and the rejection of that theory. While geocentrists are well-intended, their presence among recent creationists produce an easy object of ridicule by our critics, end quote. Right? So Dr. Faulkner points out the real issue that the scientific assault on the Bible began with heliocentrism. Faulkner is quick to point out, however, that he does not believe that heliocentrism is an attack on the Bible. Faulkner relies on the devilish artifice of textual criticism to construct a belief that heliocentricity is consistent with what the Bible says. He further relies uh, for his authority on the bankrupt scientific theory of relativity. Faulkner concludes that geocentrism, particularly a belief in a flat earth, presents, quote, an easy object of ridicule by our critics, end quote. 
Faulkner seeks to f seeks friendship with the world on heliocentrism in order to avoid the ridicule of critics. Right? We see that in James 4.4. 4. James 4.4. 4. He does not abide by the admonition of God. Right? What does James 4.4 4 state? James 4.4. 4. Yes. You have that, my brother? Yep. Yeah. Okay. 4.4. 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Right. So Dr. Faulkner with his PhD has great pride in his scholastic achievement. Therein lies the, implement, the impediment to him accepting the truth of the geocentric flat earth. He is quite frank in admitting that for him to do so would bring ridicule. His fear of ridicule is born of his pride of life, which is of the world and is contrary to God. What about 1 John 2, verse 16, right? 1 John 2, verse 16. And all for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Amen, right? Indeed, the devil knows the weak character of men and thus has conditioned people to have contempt and deride as an ignoramus anyone who believes the earth is flat. That heliocentric hive environment that zeroes in on and attacks a man's pride serves as an impediment to the truth of the geocentric flat earth being accepted in academic and scientific circles. What Faulkner does not see is that his adherence to heliocentricity and his failure to abide by the clear biblical authority for a geocentric flat earth in fact undermines the credibility of the biblical argument for creationism. For example, Glenn Ellert, in his article, this quote, The Scriptural Basis for a Geocentric Cosmology, states that the Bible clearly presents a flat earth that is immovable and lies at the center of all things, end quote. Ellert rejects the authority of the Bible and believes in both evolution and heliocentricity. Ellert states that, quote, the purpose of this essay is to demolish the notion that the Bible has any scientific relevance whatsoever. In particular, I aim to show that the same thinking that leads devout fundamentalists to deny evolution as atheism must also lead them to embrace geocentrism and flat earthism as God-given truths." End quote. One, on one point, Ellert is correct. Both creation and a geocentric flat earth are supported by the Bible. You simply cannot have one without the other. There is no lukewarm middle ground, right? Revelation 3, verse 16. Revelation 3, verse 16. What does that say? So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Amen. So Ellert, right? This Ellert is not a Christian, then proceeds in this article to present Bible passages after Bible passage that clearly state that the earth is flat, stationary, and at the center of God's creation. Ellert then inviscerates the credibility of the creationist to rely on the inerrant authority of Scripture to support the truth of God's creation and a six literal days while they uh, hypocritically dismiss the clear authority in the Bible for a flat, stationary earth, and that is at the center of God's creation. Creationists like Faulkner erroneously think that they can stand firm having one foot in the Bible, truth, to refute evolution, while having the other foot in the quicksand of biblical creationism, uh, criticism and modern science is shooing a flat, stationary, <coughs> geocentric earth, right? So, Eller is an example of how the heathen world uses creationist own arguments that attack the biblical authority for a geocentric, flat earth against creationists to undermine the biblical authority for creation. The obvious hypocrisy 
of adhering to the authority of the inherent, bi inherent Bible to refute evolution, while at the same time undermining the authority of that same Bible when it speaks of a flat stationary earth that is the, at the center of a creation serves to reveal the modern creationist as double-minded charlatans. Eller is thus forced to conclude, quote, The shocking truth of it all is that the pseudo-scientific anti-evolutionary forces have compartmentalized their literalism. There is a deafening silence among the aforementioned ranks when it comes to scientific theories other than the origin and evolution of life on Earth. The message here is, I think, obvious. The Bible is the literal truth only when it's convenient and doesn't conflict with overwhelming evidence. In my view, this invalidates the core of the anti-evolutionary movement in its entirety. If the Bible is open to interpretation from time to time, then it is open to interpretation at any time. If the Bible is occasionally poetic, then it is possibly poetic at any time, even on the first page, even on the last page, even on every page, end quote. And he's right. Yeah. He really is. If you're going to pick and choose, one moment you're saying it's to be taken literal, the next moment you're saying it's to be taken poetic or phenomenological language, then anybody can interpret the Bible. Ellert never addresses the true scientific evidence in support of a flat, stationary, geocentric Earth because neither he nor any other evolutionist are ever called on to do so by creationists. By yielding the field on heliocentricity, creationists have lost advantage of uh, biblical authority before the battle even begins. Ellert can get away with falsely saying that heliocentrism is supported by overwhelming evidence because creationists accept that statement as true and therefore do not try to refute the false claim. Ellert then uses the very arguments of creationists against the Bible truth of geocentric flat earth to bludgeon the hypocritical creationists. The creationists are portrayed as con artists use, who use clever sophistry. This serves to undermine their argument of God's creation and in turn the authority of the Bible. The satanic brainwashing to believe the heliocentric myth has been so effective that even the distinguished scientist and creation minister Kent Hoven cannot overcome his conditioning. Kent Hoven has done wonderful work exposing the lies in school textbooks promoting the theory of evolution. Hoven has suffered terrible persecution at the hands of the government even to the point of being sent to prison on false charges in order to stop him from his effective ministry against the evolutionary lies in school textbooks. Hoven, however, continues to believe in a heliocentric system with a globular spinning earth orbiting the sun. Hoven has been asked by Christians about the biblical model of a flat earth. He claims to have examined the matter and admonishes his followers to reject any notion of a flat earth. He views the flat earth as a, quote, silly distraction from the gospel, end quote. What does Hoven rely upon his authority for rejecting the flat earth? He refers his followers to, quote, any science or any earth science book, end quote. Hoven hypocritically relies upon the authority of the very earth science books that he has proven to be full of lies promoting the myth of evolution in order to establish the validity of the supposed heliocentric model. Um, Soren uh, Kai Kierkegaard, oh my goodness gracious, stated, quote, there are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what, is, what isn't true. The other is to refuse to believe what is true, end quote. God states that, quote, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, right? 2 Timothy 3, verse 13. 2 Timothy 3, verse 13. 
What does Timothy have to say? Timothy 3, verse 13. 3, 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Amen. So the so-called uh, scientists that are pushing heliocentrism have been deceived and have in turn become deceivers themselves. They are fools who speak lies and refuse to believe the truth. What about 1 Corinthians 3, verse 19? Go ahead, my brother. Honoring uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16. Yes. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen. And so that Bible should be used to reproof doctrines of men, right, Stephen? Yep. Lies. So if I'm speaking a lie, then you have every right to search the scriptures and to rebuke or reproof, right? That's what the Bible is about. We're Absolutely. to be kings and priests, right? We're to be subject one to another, right? So we also see in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 19. What does it say in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 19? For the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. You know that said Peter didn't have to have these all these doctrines of divinity, right? Yeah. He just believed the Word of God. He believed the Scriptures. He is still with the Holy Spirit as a king and priest, right? So we see we are admonished to keep the faith and not join with those so-called scientists who oppose God's Word, right? As we've clearly stated in um, 1 uh, Timothy 6, 20 to 21, right? This is what we're supposed to do. We're, commit, we're to commit to thy trust the words of God, are we not, right? O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. And we're not to believe those that are professing, that are professors, that are doctors, that are erring concerning the faith. They're, they're err. They're, those are lies. These are deceptions. So we're to expose them. That's what we're supposed to do. Stephen, do you have anything to add? Well, when you're taught lies, you become an expert in lies, you know? Right. And that's, that's all you know. And, I, you know, it seems like there are a lot of smart people that are masters in the exercise of lies because when they go to these schools and these seminaries and, and colleges, they're all to told to repeat what I tell you. Well, if what they're telling them is wrong, they're just repeating wrong stuff and then go on tell telling other people wrong stuff. So it's a vicious circle. Yeah, so we see that they're deceived, and so they end up deceiving others. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes generational, right? Yeah. Generational deception after deception after deception, right? Yep, because if your parents don't know, they're not going to tell you. You're not going to tell your kids. It's generational deception. Hmm. So, all right. Institutional deception. Institutional deception. And they learn that right in the public schools, yeah. right in the government, because the governments are ruled by the God of this world. That's right. Well, we have run out of time. I got some more information to talk, but um, yeah, I, I found this incredible about creation science. So creation science sounds really good, right? Mm -hmm. We see that, oh, it's creation so we look to Genesis and we're going, uh, like Ken Ham, who uh, is a CEO and founder of Answers in Genesis. Really good information. He's, uh, he's inducted into the Creation Science Hall of Fame. And so he correctly argues that creation account of the Bible in Genesis should be taken literally. Yes, we're to take what the Bible says literally. Yeah. So if they're saying that the evening and the morning were the first day, second day, third day, fourth day, then everything that is to be taken literal, then everything within that verse is to be taken literal as well. And if you start clipping things out, you can say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and change that to, well, for God so loved some of the world that, you know, he gave one of his begotten sons. You, you know, just you can change anything anywhere. Yeah, you just start uh, reinterpreting the Bible. Yeah. That's pretty much what they're doing. Yeah, as in the days of judges, right? Every man does what's right in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. That's what we see today. 
In the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. Yes. People yes. Were eating, drinking, marrying. Some have tried to argue that the creation account in the Bible is allegorical and should not be taken literally. But the Bible presents the creation of the heavens and the earth out of nothing within six literal days. God created the heavens and the earth in six literal days, just as he said he did. We're to believe what God says. And they want to teach us, well, you know, it's, it's really allegorical and that's not how it's created. But you want to believe that nothing exploded and made everything. Yeah, I have nothing on that. Yeah, I mean, really? Th to say that we're floating through infinite outer space. We are nobody. We're nothing. We mean nothing. We're an accident. We're, you know, yeah. and yet everything is so fragile that if sea, the sea temperature goes up one or two degrees... Millions of things will die. And this has allowed them an agenda to depopulate the earth. Isn't that what we see? The whole aspect under a globe is they say the globe is warming. So therefore we got to stop certain things and we got to restrict capitalism. And we have to, and then they start spraying us with chemicals above us. And it used to be global warming, then it was global cooling. Now it's just climate change. Oh yes, now it's climate change. So we find that they always have an agenda about the jab and now it's, it's climate change because they keep changing their stories and they're allowed to do this under the banner of heliocentrism. If we knew that God created heaven and earth, it's a pressurized system, the God's above, then we wouldn't be able to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And we wouldn't pay NASA $52 million a day when we got people starving. $52 million a day. Mm -hmm. Imagine how many mouths we could feed. But then they look to us when we're taxed to death and then somehow we're supposed to support all these starving people that they've created through this Hegelian dialect of creating a problem and offering a satanic solution. So let's come to the living word of God. Let's stop, stop believing satanic lies and let's believe what the Bible says. God bless you.